welcome this is your daily med with a lady v grace and peace from god our father and from our lord and savior jesus christ as we have been talking about jesus god's son is eternal son we see him in manifestation in the holy um, in the old testament and so we know he was manifested also in the new testament but we could have seen him bodily walking upon the face of the earth having his ministry but while he eternally existed with the father as we aforesaid he was not just a sitting idle in heaven doing nothing but he was still carrying out the work and the will of the father we see that even from the beginning that we can think of um, in creation and so today we are going to see that the promise uh, that God made um, to Abraham that promise was uh, fulfilled when Abraham entertained those uh, three men, so he thought what he had divine presence, and he was given the promise uh, that his wife would bear a son. And so today, when we look at Genesis chapter 22, we will see, yes, uh, that this promise uh, was uh, fulfilled. Isaac uh, was born. So the angel of the Lord, who is none other than Jesus, uh, fully incarnate, spoke to Abram at the offering of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. Isaac was on the altar. This is a close-up of Calvary predicting what would happen to Jesus himself. He told Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham obediently obeyed God. And so we will see from the story that he tied up Isaac and he placed him on the altar. But at the last moment, God miraculously provided a ram in Isaac's place because Abraham was willing to offer Isaac. God again promised to bless him in Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 through verse 19. So we will see from the scripture as we go into it, when the time came, Abraham did not withhold the only son as the scripture described him because he is the son of of promise so uh, Genesis chapter 22 the willingness of Abraham to offer Isaac it says sometime later God tested Abraham he said to him Abraham he says here I am he replied God said take your son your only son whom you love Isaac and go to the region of Moriah Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering and a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, placed it upon his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb 
for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. We see in this story, God promised Abraham a son. The time came a year after as the scripture told him and Isaac was born. Now he comes back and he says to Abraham, you have to go and offer your son as a sacrifice. So while Abraham took his servants and the boy and the wood and he was traveling, notice who was carrying the wood, upon whom the wood was laid, upon Isaac. Jesus had to carry his own cross. But while they were going and they were, you know, talking together, the boy was saying, Father, you, I am carrying the wood. You have the fire, you have the knife, but where is the sacrifice? And so we see that as the scripture tells us, Abraham was willing to do what God told him. But then he heard this voice, Abraham, Abraham, Lay not thine hand upon the Lord. Here God confirmed that he knew about Abraham all along. He, as stated in Genesis 18, 19, God knew that Abraham would obey him. And so even though this is the child of promise, God promised him. He didn't question God, then God, if you promise me this boy, how is my line going to be carried out if I kill him? No, he trusted that God would somehow raise up this boy, but he was not going to do anything that would disappoint his God. And so God has given to us like he has given to Abraham, a free, we are free moral agents. We can make a choice. And so when the Lord tested him, he made the choice to do what God says. Then he says, now I know that you fear God. We see that God does not plan man's choices or man's actions, but will hold us responsible for them. Should one choose an act contrary to the best good of all? Abraham stated that God would provide himself the lamb. This promise was not ultimately fulfilled by the ram but by the Lamb of God. St. John 1, 29, when John saw him, he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So when we look at this story, a couple outstanding things, as we say, uh, Isaac was carrying his own word, symbolizing that Jesus would carry his own cross. We also see in this chapter that Isaac is the first and only beloved son of his father. The same thing with Jesus, the only beloved son of the father. You may say to me, but um, I Abraham has another son, Ishmael. 
but he was not the son of promise. This is the son that God promised to him when the three visitors showed up and Abraham fed them and he made him that promise. His father willingly do as his father would and receive him back from the dead, the Bible says in a figure. The ram is the second thing that we see, an innocent victim. He died as a substitute for another. The ram's blood was shed and it was a burnt offering only consumed for God. We see that Jesus Christ himself was the offering for sin. So in providing the ram as a substitute for Isaac, God spared Abraham's heart from the pangs of pain, but he would not spare his own self. He sent his only son to die upon the cross of Calvary. When we look at verse 11 and verse 15 of our story today, we will see that the Lord will provide Jehovah himself, Jehovah Jireh, he will provide in verse 14. And so we see a few of the compounded names of God in the Old Testament. If we read verse 15 and 16 and further on 18 and 19 to other promises that God made unto Abraham. But when we look at a few of the compounded names, as we see um, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us, Exodus 15 verse 26, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner, Exodus 17 verse 8 through 15, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace in Judges 6 and verse 24, Jehovah Roy, the Lord my shepherd in Psalm 23 and verse 1, Jehovah Titkenu, the Lord our righteousness in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. Ezekiel 48 verse 35 and verse 15 and 16. So we see the angel of the Lord confirmed his covenant with Abraham because of his faith. That which the angel came or Jesus came and promised a year prior, he fulfilled. So today we are understanding that there is no promise that God make that he will not fulfill. Nothing he promised that he cannot produce he asked Sarah, why did you laugh? Because she thought, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Can my husband and myself be our children? But that he says to her, listen, nothing too hard for God. Not is, nothing that is impossible that he can't do. So whatever situation you have today, remember that he who promise is faithful and he is truthful because he cannot lie. And we see this in this story. Isaac was born based on that promise. God bless you today. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please comment, please share. Also visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med with